Good evening and welcome. And, and when I was arrested, ladies and gentlemen, when I was arrested by the Antonia Mino Vadra Congress Uddhav government, the editor's guilt of India almost declared me guilty just because they wanted to support Sonia Gandhi, Antonia Mino, Uddhav Thakre. And they said effectively that despite my bad journalism, I shouldn't have been arrested. They put out a pitiful statement. Pitiful statement. The shameless editor's guilt of India and then shamelessly remained absolutely quiet. I understand their problem. I understood their problem even then. They are vestiges of a Congress past who speak in sync with the Vadra Congress. They are a Vadra Congress mouthpiece and that's why I don't care about the views of the editor's guilt of India and none of us should. In fact, it's not even an editor's guilt of India. It is a statement guilt of India. They are a bunch of mostly retired ex-journalists and ex-politicians like Ashutosh and some sundry Mumbai-based gossip writers who do nothing, who have no relevance. They just keep releasing statements to justify their existence. Poor people. But yet, I must admire them for something. I must admire their profound association in causes in absolute sync with the Vadra Congress. It's like they're an extension of the Vadra Congress. Today, they joined hands with the Vadra Congress to defend the boring broadcasting corporation. For them, the editor's guilt of India, the boring broadcasting corporation is the pinnacle of journalism. And the boring broadcasting corporation does not need to follow any Indian laws. Effectively, they say that. In fact, one news site that allegedly took a lot of money, crores and crores and crores and crores and crores, over 30 crores from the Chinese. And the boring broadcasting corporation have two things in common. They are both supported by the editor's guilt and they both take an enormous amount of Chinese money gratefully with both their hands. The boring broadcasting corporation never stood up for Julian Assange. Julian Assange was incarcerated in their backyard and Julian Assange was forced to live like a captive in the Ecuadorian embassy in London right under the nose of the BBC and the BBC never launched a campaign for Julian Assange they absolutely kept quiet over Julian Assange maybe they needed MI5 and CIA approval for that so I find it astonishingly illiterate when astonishingly illiterate people in India, out of job, brown sahibs to be precise, launch a campaign for the BBC. The same boring broadcasting corporation that will not even call Burhan Wani a terrorist, that will not call Mannan a terrorist. Burhan Wani, Mannan Wani are not terrorists for them. And in fact, the same BBC, which will in fact lose, look for ways to support terrorists and their causes. The same BBC that keeps using the wrong map of the country and does not need, feel the need to explain to us. Ladies and gentlemen, the same BBC now caught red-handed, taking a lot of Chinese money as Brown Sahib supporters who effectively are saying that our laws should not be imposed on them. Why so, I ask? Why so? Who is the BBC? Just because the boring broadcasting corporation is some self-appointed, self-proclaimed, journalistic pope, it's like saying no laws should apply to them. Laws should apply to Google, to Facebook, to Amazon and to the public media network but not apply to the boring broadcasting corporation and why so I ask? Why? A dying, decaying, crumbling, overloaded, out of date organization with no credibility has to still follow the Indian laws. 
and the editor's guilt of India and the distressed and depressed selves of India, the distressed and depressed out of work guilts of India should go out and cry out loudly together. Their last colonial outpost, the Boring Broadcasting Corporation of India, the Boring Broadcasting Corporation, I correct myself, is having to follow the Indian law and I say they absolutely better do that. They better do that or they better leave. Choice is theirs. Debate number one tonight.